Shalom, most high in Christ blessed. This is 15 Minutes with the Captain. I am Captain Zakai, and I'm here with... Officer Jordan. Today, we're going to discuss the Day of Atonement, all right? The Day of Atonement, which is a high holy day in the Bible that nobody wants to keep anymore and, and probably don't even know about it. Y'all might not even have that much information about it, but now that you're starting to study and get yourself right and take these classes with Israel United in Christ, we make it our duty to bring to you the understanding of these high holy days. All right? So we're going to start in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 27. The book of Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27. Also, on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. Mm -hmm. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. All right. So the first thing we want to do is look at the top. Also on the 10th day of this seventh month. All right. So what is the seventh month of the year, you may ask, right? So in the scriptures in Hebrew, that word would be Tishri, right? That just means the seventh month. But the seventh month, right, for us is what? July, right? But that doesn't match with what's going on in terms of the count. Because remember, it says the 10th day of the seventh month, right? So this year, in uh, 2022, uh, the Day of Atonement is coming, I believe, in like the third week of the month of September. I could be off, but somewhere in there, third between the third and fourth uh, week of September, right? So now let's put up the word September. Let's get the understanding on that, all right? Come on. What does September mean? According to the original Roman Republican calendar, September was the seventh month of the year rather than the ninth. Mm -hmm. See that? September was the seventh month of the year rather than the ninth. Come on. The Roman calendar was only 10 months long and included the following months. Martius, Aprilis, Maius, Junius, Quintilis, Sextilis, September. October, November, and December. Right. So let's scroll up a little bit and let's get to, oh, there it is. It's right here. Read that. But the numbers and months. But the numbers and months don't add up anymore. Come on. C, September, based on the Latin septem, meaning seven. Right. So the Latin word for septem, or the Latin, or the word septem, the, the I guess the root word in Latin is septem, meaning seventh. Come on is the ninth month of the year. Right. But it turns out to be the ninth month of this calendar year. Right? So guess what? We're not going by that, right? We have to go by what the Bible says. So right. that's how come you have the Day of Atonement falling in what? The so-called ninth month, but it's actually the seventh month. All right? Of what is actually supposed to be the seventh month of the year. Okay? The first month would be what's known as Passover. Okay? That's why you have that would come uh, between March and April, okay? And that word is called a bib, meaning what? Uh, um, the, the ear of green corn. Right. Green corn. Right. The ear of green corn is meaning that's when springtime comes and things become alive, right? So from there, you count down seven, and that's where you get between September and October, all right? We don't want to bore you with all of this, but these are the things that we must know in order to know that we're doing the right thing and we're keeping this uh, high Holy Day in righteousness, all right? So come on, let's get back to uh, read 23 and 27 once again. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27. Also on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. Stop. We want the day of atonement. What does atonement actually mean, all right? We're going to take you through slow. Give me that word atonement, soldier. Thank you. Come on. Atonement. Hold on. Read Read for me the uh, the second one. So, in religious context. So, oh, so okay. Yeah. In religious context, reparation or expiation for sin. Right. Means a what? A reparation for sins. Right? A forgiveness of sin. So that's what your atonement is. All right? So come on. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 6 to give you some understanding on that. Right? Because we just say an atonement for sin. Let's, let's, let's see what this is going into a little bit more. Come on. Leviticus chapter 5 verse 6. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord. Come on. For his sin which he had sinned. Right. So he's going to bring a trespass offering for the Lord. Right. Come on. 
a female from the flock, a lamb, or a kid of the goats for a sin offering. Right, because now this is when the sacrificial law was still in effect. So you're now bringing whatever animal it was to sacrifice for your sin. Read on. And the priest shall make an atonement. What shall the priest do? Make an atonement Come on. for him concerning his sin. Right, so this all goes back to making atonement for your sins. And I know what you're thinking. Christ is the atonement. Christ is the atonement. So why would you have to make a sacrifice for your sin? Why even keep the day of atonement? Stay right there, family. Stay right there. We're going to get to all of that. All right? So come on. Let me get uh, Nehemiah chapter 10 and verse 32. All right? Just stick around with us. Y'all will learn. Come on. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 32. Also, we made ordinances for us to charge ourselves yearly with the third part of a shekel for the service of the house of our God. Come on. For the shoe bread and for the continual meat offering and for the continual burnt offering of the Sabbaths of the new moons for the set feast and for the holy things and for the sin offerings to make an atonement for Israel. Excellent. Come on. And for all the work of the house of our God. Right. So at all times, Israel had to be prepared in what? Here's the important part, y'all. Listen to this. Right. For meat offerings and for burnt offerings and Sabbaths and new moons and for the set feasts. Right. So for all of these uh, different uh, feast days and high holy days, you had to have those uh, sacrificial uh, atonements, right? You had to sacrifice for those sins, and those were the atonements for the nation of Israel. All right? So come on, let's go. Go back to Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 27. All right, family, we have to know what these high holy days mean. This is the laws of God that we have to keep. So don't look at it as minutia. A lot of times when y'all were reading the Bible in church, it seemed like minutia, a bunch of stuff. This one begat that one. He begat this. This begat that. Oh, uh, this turtle dove. And you have no clue. You're like, this is nonsense. Now you're going to understand why the Lord put all this in there. Come on, bro. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27. Also, on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be in a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you. Stop. It shall be a holy convocation unto you. Let's bring up the word convocation. All right. Bring up the word convocation. Come on, read that. Convocation, a large formal assembly of people. Right, a large formal assembly of people. Come on. The action of calling people together for a large formal assembly. Right. So this means that everyone has to do this. All right, family? Everyone must do this. This is not up to the, oh, oh no, you know, I, I, I already atoned for my sins. I don't, I don't see why I have to keep the day of atonement. This ain't Christmas. Right. You know what I mean? This is not like uh, the, the regular holidays in the world where you make a decision whether you feel like keeping it or not. No, the Lord said this is a must. You must do this. And everybody has to do this. This is a, a large formal assembly of people. The people being discussed now, the Israelites. All right? A holy convocation. All right? Come on. Take me back to the top. Let's read it again. Y'all stay close. Pay attention to everything. We're going to take it slow and you will understand. Come on. Also, on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you. And ye shall afflict your souls. And ye shall afflict your souls. All right, that's what we want to get to. All right, what is afflicting your soul? Hold on one second. Let me see if I want something else. All right, give me Isaiah. Give me Isaiah chapter 58. All right, family, what we're going to do, what we're doing here is defining each of these terms to make sure that we're truly understanding what it is that we're doing, all right? Because as you come now and start to uh, walk this walk as an Israelite, or maybe you're now coming in for the first time and finding out what it is you have to do, this is what is known as your guidebook, all right? We're your guides today, showing you exactly what you must do to be perfect with the Lord, all right? So now this is what the part of Leviticus 23 and 27, when it says afflicting your souls, now you're going to understand what that means. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 3. Come on. Wherefore have we fasted? Wherefore have we fasted? Meaning, why have we fasted? Come on. Say they, and thou seest not? Come on. It says, Lord, and you don't see us? Come on. Wherefore have we afflicted our souls? Wherefore or why have we afflicted our souls? So that's what the affliction is. The fasting. All right? Because when you fast, you're afflicting your soul. 
you might think afflicting your soul is uh listening to some bad music. <laughs> you know, and they used to uh I know Arabs, they would take knives and yes. sling them on their backs. Right, right. Yeah, you got those other Catholic religions and stuff where they beat themselves or whatever. Right. You might think that's afflicting your soul. That is not what the Lord is talking about. Read that again. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Come on. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? Right. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? Meaning you fast. But many of you don't even know how to fast. We're going to bring that out. Finish that up. And thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Right. Okay. So what? We must do the fast according to what a fast is actually supposed to be. All right? Because nowadays you say, oh, I'm going to go on a, a water fast. And you, drink, and you drink water all day without, without food. That's in your mind. That's not what the Lord calls a fast. Right? You might say, I'm on a hamburger fast. You just eating hamburgers all damn day. The Lord don't look at that as a fast. Or some watermelon fast or a fruit fast, you making things up. According to the Lord, there's one way only to fast. All right? Those other fasts you talk about, those are dietary fastings. That has nothing to do with the Lord's business. All right? If you want to do a water fast to lose weight, that's up to you. But that's not according to what the Lord is talking about when he's afflicting your soul. Right? So Jonah was told by the Lord to go to Nineveh and preach to the Ninevites. Right? That was the Israelites who were in Nineveh. Okay, a lot of people uh, in the Christian churches, they say, no, this was the other nations. No, when you read uh, also in the book of Tobit, which is in the Apocrypha that a lot of you don't read, you're going to find out that those people that he went to go teach were Israel. All right. And much wickedness was going on in the place. So Jonah went there to tell him, proclaim a fast because the Lord is going to do something to this place. So read on. Come on. The book of Jonah, chapter three, verse four. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried. And said, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Come on. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast. So they believed God. And in believing God, they said, what? We're going to proclaim a fast. Listen close to what the fast entailed. Listen close. And put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. Come on. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth. And sat in ashes, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. You heard that? Neither man nor beast nor herd of flock taste anything. We're talking about men, women, children. They said that animals can't even drink nothing. No, no uh, kibbles and bits, no nothing. No hay, no straw. Them animals had to sit there and fast as well. Read. Let them not feed, nor drink water. Wait, nor what? Nor drink water. Nothing. Nothing. We're talking about no food, no water, no brushing your teeth, family. We're talking about straight up from the night before. When you start this fast, you go through this whole fast. No brushing the teeth, no water, no eating. You're afflicting your soul for the Lord on this day of atonement. Read on, my brother. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hand. Now, this one, they were doing the sackcloth and pouring ashes on. The Day of Atonement? No. All right? We're going to get into that. All right? Come on. When we start the fast, okay, a day for the Lord starts in the evening. Give me Genesis chapter 1, right, in verse 5. So we're going to go from dark to dark. It's like keeping a regular Sabbath day, all right? Because the Sabbath, the seven-day Sabbath starts on Friday dark to Saturday dark, all right? The Day of Atonement can come on any one of those days, but we still have to keep it when it gets dark. That's when the, the fast begins, and it ends when it's dark the very next day, all right? So come on. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Come on. And the evening. And the evening. And the morning, and the morning were the first day. Were the first day. So the first day start. The days start at dark. That's right. when the day actually starts. It's not like, uh, I mean, in in nowadays time they say it starts at midnight, mm. right? But that's not the start of the Lord's day. The start of the Lord's day is when it becomes dark. That's the beginning of the day, and when it ends again, that twenty four hour period is when it's going to be dark again. All right, y'all. All right, very good. Now let's go back to Leviticus twenty three, verse twenty seven. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27. 
Also, on the tenth day of this seventh month, mm -hmm. there shall be in a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. Come on. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Come on. And ye shall do no work in that same day. For it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Right. So this, in this Sabbath day, yes, the day of atonement is a Sabbath day. There's many Sabbaths, brothers and sisters, not just the seven-day Sabbath, seven-day Sabbath. Okay, so this one is considered a Sabbath. So the same thing, there's no working in this day. All right, when that work, the work we're talking about is actually going to work, making money on that day. The Lord said, don't do that. Okay, don't do that. All right, so now give me the book of Joel, chapter 1 and verse, no, no, sorry, give me Leviticus. No, 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 I went, no, no, read down. I want Leviticus, keep going. We're going to read down to 31, and I'm going to tell you why. I wanted to bring this out. Verse 30. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will, dis will I destroy from among his people. He shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Right. You heard that? It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings, right? Now, the reason I want to bring out this dwellings is because we heard one of these apologetics, urban apologetics come out and say, IUIC doesn't know how to keep a Sabbath. That when they keep the Sabbath, it says in your dwelling, that means you're supposed to be in your house. <laughs> That's completely stupid. We're going to show you that. That's why you don't listen to these people. They, right. They're of the devil. They don't know the Bible. They hate God. So we're going to show you that in your dwellings has nothing to do with staying inside your home. Remember, a holy convocation is what? A holy gathering of people. Now, get me the book of Joel, chapter 1 and verse 14. Because our job is to come, down, come out here and smash stupidity. All right? Teach y'all and get all of the foolishness out of your mind. Like the Bible says, we ought to uh, pull down, you know, wicked imaginations and, and, and thoughts that are without understanding. All right? Uh, Joel chapter 1 and verse 14. Come on. Joel chapter 1 verse 14. Come on. Sanctify ye a fast. Sanctify, sanctify ye a fast. Come on. Call a solemn assembly. Come on. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. And cry unto the Lord. Alas, for the day. For the day of hold the... On, hold on. Stay right there. We're going to go back. It says gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land. Into the house of the Lord your God, right? All the inhabitants of the land. That is your dwelling places. Right. Okay? You cannot, you, you, the point of just being inside of your home for the fact that, that is dumb. You have to call everybody together because the whole point of it is, is for us to gather together as this fast to show the Lord that what we love him and we need his help. We need, that's why we pray together. And all of that, you understand, during this fast. So don't let these people just say the dwellings and now they're running off into the, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. You're supposed to be in your home. This is dumb. This is completely dumb. All right, go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. All right? I want to show you all this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Right. And how I'm bringing this to you in terms of gathering all the inhabitants, because we're going to be in different places. We're going to be all over the world. All right. And we have to gather ourselves together where we're at. So we're not going to be in just our home. It's dumb. We're going to be in different places. We got to gather where we're at. All right. So not everybody's just going to be by themselves. All right. Now, give me Hebrews. We, we got the scattered. I think y'all understand. Well, give me. Yeah, let's, let's get in the New Testament. Let's get in the New Testament for anybody who's just coming in and thinking, oh, man, that's just Old Testament talk. No, no, no. The book of James. James, I'm sorry. Chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. So we're going to be scattered due to our captivity. But remember what it said. This is a statute unto the generations forever. 
Never forget that. We must always keep this. And when we and when we're together in whatever places we were scattered, we have to gather together. All right. So now let's get Judges chapter five and verse 11. Right. Because we're getting to the point to where you're saying, but why keep this day of atonement? Why do it? If Christ is that atonement, because Christ is the atonement. Right. Correct. Well, go ahead. Read this. The book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 11. Come on. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. Come on. In the places of drawing water. In the places of drawing water. That means what? Your place of slavery, the place of your captivity. All right, come on. There. There, where you're scattered all over the place. Come on. Shall they rehearse. Shall they do what? Rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. There they shall rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. What are the righteous acts? Please get that, bro. Give me Deuteronomy 6 and 25. We're going to show you what the righteous acts are. You have to rehearse them. Why is that word being used rehearsed? Because when the Lord returns and we go back with him, that's when the real show is going to start. Right now, this is rehearsal, but we got to get it correct. That's what that grace time is for. Time for us to rehearse, get ourselves right. So when that time comes, we're going to walk this thing perfect. Y'all got to recognize this Bible and understand it. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 25. Come on. And it shall be our righteousness mm -hmm. if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. That's right. As he had commanded us. That's right. Our righteousness is keeping the law. So one of the laws, the day of atonement, family. We must keep this thing. All right. So now let's go to Romans chapter 5. All right. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. And let's start in verse 10. All right, let me get there with you. Romans chapter 5 in verse 10. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 10. We're going to read 11 as well. For if we, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. You see that? Because when we were enemies to the Lord, that means we weren't doing the damn thing that he said. All right? You'll see in the scriptures where the Lord says, listen, ye are my friend if ye do what I command ye, right? So if you're not, you're his enemy. So look what it says here. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, meaning when Christ died, now did he did what? He reset the clock, so to speak, right? Now we're able to start again. Now we got to keep the commandments, though. Read on. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Come on. And not only so, but we also joy in God. Through, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. By, by whom we have now received the atonement. Why? Because now Christ died for our sins. So he atoned for all Israel's sins. Right? Does that mean we go off and just start doing whatever the hell we want? Absolutely not. We still have to do what? Rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Like I said in Judges chapter 5 and verse 11, precept must be upon precept. OK, one scripture doesn't just knock out another one. OK, oh, Christ is around. So the, the whole Bible is dead now. That's it. You know what I mean? We, we can sin. We can do whatever. Oh, uh, Jesus, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, her booty was big. I had to go home with it. No, this is not how it works, y'all. This is not how it works. All right. Come on. Give me uh, Acts chapter 27 and verse nine, because some of you may say, well, after Jesus died, because I know I know what's going on. Family, we know what's going on. After Jesus died, there's no more high holy days. Oh, let no man judge you through uh, drink and meats. And y'all don't know what the hell's going on here. Okay, let's go to Acts. What well, I told you get Acts 27. Yes, sir. Hold on, let me get there with you. I want to. I want to be there with you. And and those of you, I want you to listen very close to this. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 27, verse nine. Thank you. Now, when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous. Because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them. Right. It says, now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because they were about to get on the, on the ship, Paul and, and, and uh, the other, I think, some prisoners, right? They're about to get on the ship, right? It said, because, hold, because the fast was already passed. In the New Testament, it calls it the, the fast. T-H-E, the fast. You know why it's called the fast? Because this is the only fast that the Lord makes us keep. If you notice in the other parts of the scripture, they say fast, the Lord says fast and pray, right? 
in, so that the Lord can answer your prayers. You can uh, it kind of, uh, you know, get your mind right. OK, fat. And when you're fasting, you don't have sex with your wife and so on and so forth. But those are not or, or in your wives, you don't have sex with your husbands. Right. As well. But it does not tell you you must fast. It says fast and pray, meaning that'll get you your results probably faster. You understand? Or you'll get a clearer mind to to pray and make sure your prayer is correct. So when it says the fast, that's the only time that there's a law on fasting. They don't have to say the Day of Atonement here. Because anybody who reads this who's an Israelite is going to know what this means. Right. Why? Because the Bible is only written to the Israelites. That's the problem with a lot of our people. They don't understand that. What about this one and that one and this one and that one? The white one, the black one, pick the punk and I jump. No. Listen. You got to understand this is only to us. The fast. There's no other law in the Bible that is that is making you do a fast like in Leviticus 23. All right? So this is so. But, but here's the most important part. Who's keeping the fast? Paul. You hang your whole uh, uh, doctrine on Paul, and Paul is keeping the Day of Atonement. Mm. So what does that mean for you, Christian? You have to keep the Day of Atonement. Right. When y'all come up in this, y'all must keep the Day of Atonement. Read that thing again, man. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them. Right. So we can't get around it. Although Christ is the... Uh, the ultimate sacrifice for our sins, we still have to keep the Day of Atonement. But what? We now don't bring any animals to sacrifice because the sacrificial law is done away with, family. When In the, in the New Testament, when it talks about uh, the law being, well, it doesn't actually say that. But when Christ comes, he's going to take away the law of sacrifice because he now is that sacrifice. The law of sacrifice could never get us healed. Why? Because if you were homosexual, you got put to death. If you uh, broke the Sabbath, you got put to death. If you were adultery, you got put to death. You could not uh, uh, get reparations. You couldn't, you couldn't repair that sin. Okay, you could not atone for that sin. That's the best word to use, right? So now Christ is the ultimate atonement, meaning that what? Now you could, if, if you are a homosexual, you can change grace. If you have committed adultery, you now can change. That's called grace, all right? If you break the Sabbath, you can change. That's called grace. All right, family? Come on. Let me get uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 23. All right? And in this atonement, right, when you're asking for this atonement, the Lord don't want you to show up and you're asking for forgiveness of sins, but yet you haven't forgiven anybody what they might have done to you. You understand? Maybe somebody did something to you and you're holding that as a grudge. The Lord is not interested in, in, in now answering your, your prayer. He's like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not removing your sin because you didn't remove the, the, that brother's sin. Or if you felt like the brother had a problem with you, then maybe you should go over and speak with him and get rid of that first. Right? But watch this, y'all. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 23. Thank you. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar... Uh -huh. And there, remember, is that that brother had ought against thee. Right. So imagine you bring it now. You're about to pray. And now you remember, damn, this brother got a problem with me. You know what I mean? I did something to him or, you know what I mean? And you knew you were in the wrong. Come on. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. You see that? So before you bring all your gift to the Lord, meaning your, uh, your, your, uh, Acknowledgement of your sin, and then the Lord, ask, and you asking the Lord to forgive you. You now want to make sure that anything that you have done with a brother that you know you've done. It's not that if you don't, if you don't know, then you don't know. But if you know you ain't right, then go over there and speak to that man and ask him for forgiveness as well. And look, and he's probably going to say yes. I'm going to forgive you because you went to him. All right. So now, before we talked about when the fasting was going on in Nineveh, they put on the ash on their head. You know, you understand. But the Lord wants you to fast and not look like you're fasting. Don't fast and be like, oh, man, I'm so, I'm so tired. I'm fasting. You want everybody to know you fast. And the Lord said, no, no, no. Don't do none of that. You know what I want, right? Yes, sir. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 17. Come on. Well, verse 16. 16. Yes. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, 
they have their reward. Right. So if we're fasting for the Lord to bless us as a people, Lord, please bless us as a people. Allow us to keep coming together, gathering, building. More people see the teachings, and now they're now coming back to their uh, uh, heritage and their understanding of you, Christ. We can't be here. Uh, uh. Oh, we're fasting today for the Lord. The Lord said, okay, you got your reward. Now everybody know what you're doing. You got your reward. But he said to rather do this. Come on. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head. He said, yo, put a little bit of grease on your head, man. Come on. He, and, and hold on. It's not just that hair part. He said, yo, get your face right. Do what you was going to do normally. Put, put some lip balm on. You understand? He said not to taste anything. He ain't say to go outside looking crazy. He never said that. So that's what he said. Anoint your head, man. Get yourself together. Get yourself looking good. You know, put a little bit of olive oil on there. Say some prayers and get yourself right when you go outside. Come on. And wash thy face. Right. And wash thy face. Make yourself, even though you fasting, you just go about your day as normal. Fresh. Come on. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Y'all heard that? The Father which see if you in secret shall reward thee openly, okay? So all praises to the Most High, brothers and sisters who watch this. I hope you glean something from it and get some good understanding and join us in this year's Day of Atonement. We're going to fast, we're going to afflict our souls, and we're going to try to get right with the Lord as always, all right? So I am Captain Zakai. I'm with my reader. Officer Jordan. Yes, sir. And with that, we say shalom. Keep studying. We used to scream black power while heroin was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.